guys what's up so this is quite unorthodox video as we have not seen such a videos but because peop, i thought it will help you a lot because there was no such source for my preparation so i thought i'll make this so it will cover major acts conventions protocols bodies etc so they are all covered uh, so if you want me to continue making such kind of unorthodox video do let me know on the facebook page as well as spread the word especially for the poor and those who cannot afford coaching as well as for those who are ignorant and do not know how to go about their preparation and i have seen lakhs of indian youths in disarray and doubt so please try to spread the word so that it can be eliminated if i have any query or doubt or request please comment below the video in the youtube or on facebook even if i don't reply back i will take notice of it and i will try to improve my videos based on those advice so basically what is a convention see convention is basically a guideline or framework or outer skeleton it is like very very major head headings type of thing they do not delve into the painstaking details convention begins as an international meeting of representatives and result in general agreement about procedures or actions they will take on specific topics for example let's say there is a vienna convention it is related to ozone depletion but vienna convention do not cover any specific targets or details it is the montreal protocol to vienna convention which covers these details so are you getting the point so basically the law which are made in the parliament are kind of conventions while the bureaucrats who make the specific details on how those laws will be implemented on the field are kind of a protocol thingy so a protocol is basically it is where the party set specific aims or legal obligations so in one line if i have to say a convention encourages while protocol commits so this is the key difference between a convention and a protocol so first of all we have united nations convention to combat desertification so this is applicable specifically for those countries who are experiencing serious drought or desertification particularly in africa so it is to combat desertification and mitigate that is decline or decrease the effects of drought through national action programs mitigation does not means elimination mitigation means controlling or decreasing it to an extent where there is no significant impact of the question of the topic in hand so it incorporates long term strategies which are supported by international cooperation and partnership arrangements so basically it is based on principle of ppd that is participation partnership and decentralization and it addresses arid semi arid and dry sub humid areas which are also called as dry land here is the where the most vulnerable ecosystems as well as the people can be found so at present this data is important for essays and questions 13 million hectare land becomes unproductive via desertification 13 million hectare with potential loss of 20 million tons of food grain and affecting some approximately if you say it is as good as 20% of the world's population so it is the first and the only internationally legally binding framework set up to address the problem of desertification and in 2007 that is 10 10 year strategy was adopted till 2018 to forge a global partnership to reverse this is important to reverse that is whatever already lost have occurred to change it and prevent in future desertification as well as land degradation see there are two different thing land degradation and desertification land degradation is the first stage desertification follows it to mitigate again mitigate do not mean eliminate mitigate means to control in a manageable fashion and to effects of drought and in specifically to support poverty reduction and environmental sustainability it is a very very big problem so that is why this convention is important now we have bonn convention also called as convention on the migratory birds or also it, it usually people think it's for birds but it also for animals uh, first of all whenever there is a convention by name of a place you should know where it is that is the most important thing so it is on the uh, bank of uh, river rhine and it aims to conserve terrestrial marine and avian migratory species throughout their range this is important 
it do not include birds also it also includes uh, animals also there are certain migratory animals which do show migration annually or semi annually so it is an intergovernmental treaty it is concluded under united nation environmental program and it is concerned with wildlife and habitat conservation so appendix 1 includes threatened migratory species and let's say these migrate within a country so do not in, uh, do not involve what is called as international cooperation and now there we have appendix 2 so it is migratory species which are requiring international cooperation so anyway moving forward this is ramsar convention since again ramsar is a place you should know where it is it is in iran so it is a treaty for conservation and sustainable utilization of wetlands and recognize the fundamental ecological function of wetlands and their economic cultural scientific and recreational values so one word if you want to remember sar sarman sarovar so sarovar se i remember wetland it's as simple as that and now you'll never forget just remember sarovar and you will remember wetland the definition of wetland is areas of marine water the depth of which at low tide do not exceed 6 meters there are low tide and high tide i'll explain it if i some time do geography if you want me to do geography also let me know it includes more than 2000 wetland worldwide so wetlands are one of the most threatened of all ecosystems especially in india the major causes are first of all loss of vegetation then salinization whenever you do excessive water is there so salt accumulates and it causes uh, destruction of that particular wetland excessive inundation then water pollution obviously then invasive species let's say cornea or certain species come they will completely destroy the wetland they'll spread like weed then excessive development as well as road building then important wetlands of India are first is Ashtamudi wetland in Kerala then Vembanad coal wetland in Kerala then Chilka Lake in Odisha Kevla Dev in Rajasthan Loktak is extremely important because it's kind of a floating lake. Then Sambhar Lake in Rajasthan, it is a very very salt lake. It is a major producer of salt. Wooler Lake in Jammu and Kashmir. So these are the most famous wetlands in India. Then we have again, I told you in the beginning, convention means basic framework or guidelines. Vienna Convention happened before protocol. So it came into effect in 1988 to protect the ozone layer. So basically ozone hole was observed around in early 80s and 70s so it was measured in dobson units the thickness of ozone layer so it fell drastically there was drastic decline in the dobson units of ozone layer thickness that is why they came into place why ozone layer is important everyone knows there are three ultraviolet ultraviolet c ultraviolet b ultraviolet a so c and b are almost completely eliminated by ozone so these are the most powerful ones so if you, if you ultraviolet C is allowed to pass, uh, you will have lots and lots of skin cancers and other cataracts and whatnot. So that is why ozone is important. So it does not include legally binding reduction goals because they are laid out in the accompanying Montreal Protocol. So what is Montreal Protocol? It is a protocol on substance that depletes the ozone layer and it is a protocol to Vienna Convention. So basically it is an international treaty to, to protect the ozone layer by phasing out production of numerous substances that are responsible for ozone depletion no problem atmospheric concentration have either decreased or leveled off means they are same since Montreal protocol came into picture this is the important part this is the way you show that it has worked due to this ozone hole in Antarctica is slowly recovering and 1980 levels will be reached by 2070 so 90 years it will take to reduce the damage which human beings have done. Montreal Protocol includes everyone knows even a child of 6th class knows what is CFC now. So basically CFC phase out management as well as HCFCs that is chlorofluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons. But it does not deal with hydrofluorocarbons. So this is very important point because hydrofluorocarbons do not damage ozone but it is a very very potent greenhouse agent. Is that absolutely understood? So hydrofluorocarbon is creating lot of problems in international diplomacy. Basically hydrofluorocarbons pose no harm to the ozone layer because unlike chlorofluorocarbon and LCFC they do not contain chlorine. They do not contain chlorine. However they are extremely potent greenhouse gases. So those parties which, which are under Montreal protocol they do not need to report 
the HFC. However, they can be reported under Kyoto Protocol. If you are signatory to it, you have to report it. So, Montreal Protocol is the most single important international agreement till date. The two ozone treaties, that is Vienna and Montreal, have been ratified by 197 parties. Is that understood? Almost the entire world have ratified it. So, it is the first universally ratified treaty. Then Mina Meta Convention on Mercury. So, Mina Meta is a place in Japan. I have already told you. Just remember. So, since there is M, so I remember Mercury. It's very simple. So, it is an international to protect human health. Basically, what happened is uh, there was an industry which led to leakage of mercury into the water, which fish ate that mercury, led to bioaccumulation. When human ate, it led to mercury poisoning and what is called as Mina Meta disease. So, it is a neurological disease causing symptoms of ataxia, numbness meaning you do not feel and general muscle weakness means your muscle goes atrophy and you cannot move, you have loss of strength. Then field of vision becomes very narrow, it's also called a tunnel vision. Then there is damage to hearing, finally you have paralysis and even death. Now it is related not only to mercury but it is related to everything, is that understood? It is related to anthropogenic emissions and release of mercury and mercury compounds. In in especially now see the uh, beauty of Japan it happened in 1956 and within 50 years that is in 2001 not even 50 years Mina Meta became an official Japanese eco town and it has received lots and lots of awards similar is the case with Hiroshima and Nagasaki who got bombed in 1945 under atom bombs and now they are thriving like anything so we should take strength and motivation from such examples then we have Geneva Protocol. Basically, it is protocol for prohibition of use in the war of asphyxiating poisonous or other gases and of bacteriological methods of warfare. Since it is a long way back protocol of 1930s, it happened after First World War and League of Nations. So, their time, these are the things which are most popular. So, that is why they have been used. So, it is a treaty prohibiting the use of chemical and biological weapons in international armed conflicts. Then it prohibits the use of asphyxiating, poisonous or other gases and analogous liquids, materials etc etc. And finally, like specific treaties like BWC and CWC. CWC is very very important and I will be covering it in later lectures. Also covers it in exhaustive details. Now we have certain chemicals, so we have Stockholm Convention, so Stockholm is the capital of, everyone knows it's the capital of Sweden, there are various things related to Stockholm, that is Stockholm Syndrome, where if you get kidnapped by a kidnapper, you actually develop liking for the kidnapper, so it is called a Stockholm Syndrome. Anyways, so Stockholm Convention is to aims to eliminate or restrict the production and use of persistent organic pollutants, is that understood, POPs have to be restricted or eliminated. Then they are chemical substances that persist in the environment, bioaccumulate through the food web and pose a risk of causing adverse effects to human health and the environment. Is that understood? Basically it is related to persistent which are persisting and lead to bioaccumulation. So you see what is the difference between bioaccumulation and bioconcentration? Bioaccumulation can happen from air, water, from food but bioconcentration is a specific term which is reserved for water only. So DDT is a characteristic example, it gets accumulated from fishes to fish eating birds and finally it causes disturbance in the calcium metabolism, calcium metabolism of the bird causes thinning of shells and finally it leads to brittle eggs and finally it causes decrease in bird population. So this is the role of DDT, it is a very very important point, this is also called as biomagnification. So DDT is allowed to use publicly for control of malaria because malaria kills far, 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 far more people than DDT ever will. That is why it is being allowed to be used. So developed countries have to provide financial resources as well as technology. So finally, those who are intentionally produced need to be eliminated. And where, where they are unintentionally produced, wherever it is feasible, eliminate them also. And finally, manage and dispose in an environmentally friendly manner. Then we have Rotterdam Convention. So whenever there is a dam, it means it is from Netherlands. Is that understood? Amsterdam, Rotterdam, etc. So this is how you do it. Then we have, it is called as PICP. Just remember PIC. There has to be prior informed consent procedure. 
बिकॉज यू आर ट्रांसफरिंग एन इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड सर्टेन हजार्डस केमिकल्स इट इज आयदर डिक्लाइन डिक्रीज और कंप्लीटली एलिमिनेट इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड ऑफ सर्टेन थिंग्स सो मल्टी लेटरल ट्रीटी टू प्रमोट शेयर्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज इन रिलेशन टू इम्पोर्टेशन ऑफ हजार्डस केमिकल्स द कन्वेंशन प्रमोट्स ओपन एक्सचेंज ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो देर शुड नॉट बी एनी ए सीमेट्रिकल इन्फॉर्मेशन एज दे कॉल इन इकोनॉमिक्स एंड कॉल्स ऑन एक्सपोर्टर्स ऑफ हजार्डस केमिकल्स टू यूज प्रॉपर लेबलिंग इंक्लूडिंग डायरेक्शन ऑन सेफ हैंडलिंग एंड इनफॉर्म परचेज ऑफ एनी रिस्ट्रिक्शन और बैंस नॉ सिग्नेटरी नेशन कैन डिसाइड वेदर टू अलाउ और बैन आफ्टर दे हैव कंप्लीट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑब्वियसली एंड एक्सपोर्टिंग कंट्रीज आर ऑबलाइज मीन्स दे हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट दे कंप्लाई विद द जोरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ इम्पोर्टिंग कंट्रीज सो बेसिकली रिसेंटली देर वॉज अ कंट्रोवर्सी एसोसिएटेड विद कैनेडा वेर दे रिफ्यूज टू अलाउ एडिशन ऑफ क्राइसोलाइट एसबेस्टॉस फाइबर्स नाउ दीज क्राइसोलाइट एसबेस्टॉस फाइबर्स दे कॉजेज मीजोथीलियोमा ऑफ लंग्स वेरी वेरी फैंसी वर्ड बट इट्स अ कैंसर ऑफ लंग्स वेर यू डाई मेजरेबली so basically it has to be allowed in rotterdam convention but canada refused because it was one of the large importer as well as there was problems from other countries also but now they are saying that they will not oppose its inclusion in future meetings because these these conventions are made so that monetary gains let's say you are exporting something so if they have prior informed consent they can refuse it if it is included under rotterdam convention so the main aim of these treaties is that you are not allowing someone else to have monetary gains over health gains of the entire population of the country so now canada is going on the right direction so we have basel convention so it is earlier known as basel convention on control of trans boundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposal so it is specifically to prevent transfer of hazardous waste from developed to less developed countries is that understood this is the first and more most important now earlier the rotterdam convention was because of international trade now it is for disposal so basel we all know basel norms for banks everyone knows it so basel norms for banks basically includes for basel norms 1 2 3 so basel is a place in switzerland so please remember these things they come handy especially in prelims as well as in mains you can line write one or two points it is to minimize the amount and toxicity of waste generated to ensure their environmentally sound management as close as possible to the source of generation to assist ldcs that is least developed countries in environmentally sound management of hazardous and other waste they generate also deals with electronic waste so for electronic waste i'll be doing a detail so it basically includes lead cadmium beryllium etc so criticism is it do not address the movement of radioactive waste so this is a major criticism of this basel convention Finally, we have last convention on chemicals. It is related to long-range transboundary air pollution. So only Americas plus Europe plus Russia is the member of this, plus Central Asia, some countries. So it is not very well important for UPSC, but anyway, let's finish it. So it is also called as Air Pollution Convention. It is intended to protect the human environment against air pollution. India is not a member signatory, by the way, and it to gradually reduce and prevent air pollution including long range transboundary air pollution now few chemicals which are banned under for elimination or for banning in basel rotterdam stockholm and clrtap includes aldrin chloridane hexachlorobenzene lindane and heptachlor so i hope you like this innovative video and if you do like it uh, do hit the thumbs up and let's me know do spread the word as much as you can and do comment below whatever your doubt is specifically it will help those who cannot afford coaching this is the facebook page facebook.com slash romansani.official you can also tweet at twitter handle at romansani thank you for watching the video have an awesome day